So when we look at cash flow, guys, we have to look at it as kind of like a wheel in our business or kind of like a flow. Okay. So this is our cash flow maximizer training. Again, we have like a multi part series video training and course that goes with this. But this is how we again can look at our at our cash flow holistically and again make sure we're dealing with actual root cause problems, not just treating symptoms. Because if you have bad cash flow and your reaction is to go get deposits to bring into your account to shore up your cash flow, that's a symptomatic reactive way to solve it. And you're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right? So again, or I'm just gonna go sell more work to make more money to fix the hole I have now. Ryan, I'm sure you hear this all the time, right? People are collecting deposits to pay for things they've already paid for or how already have out on the street. And you're just, again, you're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's all it is, right? It's very simple. Yep, yep, Yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah, so we're gonna start at the top guys and kind of move clockwork through this. And again, what I want you guys to focus on today, if I want you to leave with like one thing, is I want you to leave with some clear, actionable things you can implement today. Knowledge, insight, tools, all these things I show are great. But if you're having cash flow issues, you guys need to take action, right? You need to solve the problem and get money in the bank. So I want you again, as we go through this, to focus really on the ones that you can solve the quickest that might have the biggest impact. So some of these things you're gonna be doing great. You're gonna score yourself really high out of 10. And some of these things are gonna be really poor. Focus on the things you're weakest at and those top things, again, when we leave this call, that's where I want you guys to put your time and effort, okay? So as we go through this, guys, um, I want you just again to either, you can type it in the chat or just write down a paper, how you score yourself, as you can see here, at a 10 for each area. And then again, we'll focus on the, on the weakest things, okay? So let's get started. So number one, and again, this goes back to the pricing and profit issue is, are you actually dealing with the wrong type of clients? So if you're dealing with class C and class D clients consistently, so people who are you know, not paying you, who are like a really a headache to deal with, you know, who don't want to pay for change orders, who are dragging out projects, right? Who are consistently behind on paying their invoices, that's going to really, really drag down your cash flow. Okay. It's, it's very simple. Like imagine if you were a restaurant, right? And everybody who came into your restaurant, like struggled to pay you right? Or can only pay half the amount or they're like, oh, well, I'm broke or they dine and dash, right? You're going to have terrible cash flow in your business. It's quite simple. So if you're potentially dealing with the wrong types of customers or customers who are essentially like deadbeats, it's going to be very, very brutal to consistently have good cash flow. So this is one of the biggest things we see. And the reason why we focus so much on pricing is when you are pricing properly and pricing at a premium price, you generally weed those people out of the market, right? Anybody who has a terrible budget or who's just completely out to lunch, or again, is a price shopper, you're probably not gonna deal with them if you're charging correctly. So this is where I want you guys to start. Think, hey, do we have recurring clients who are always like 30, 60, 90 days behind on paying? Do we have, you know, repeat business that's like, you know, always nickel and diming us? You know, are we getting killed because certain types of leads we're getting, right? We're, we're consistently struggling to get the price we need. We're getting lowballed. If that's the case, guys, you have to cut them out because again, you can't really run a profitable business with bad customers. Okay? It's very, very simple. And, and I assume most of you guys here provide like a phenomenal product and service and a great experience, and you need to be compensated for that. And people in the market, ultimately they'll pay that price again, um, as long as you, you know, follow through on your end, okay? Yeah, Ashley, insurance is notoriously bad at this. Yes, but again, if you know that, you can structure things in your business. We'll talk about that to account for it. But yes, insurance is very well known for being terrible at paying people, okay? So is commercial work generally. So that's that's number one. Now, number two, so again, guys, just type in the chat, like how do you score yourself out of 10 here, right? Maybe you're a five, sometimes you deal with bad customers, sometimes you don't. Maybe like you're a nine or a 10 and you like, you really have a good system for dealing with the right people. Or again, maybe you're a one or a two, you're dealing with anybody and everybody. And again, you're just getting killed when it comes to building. Okay, so Ian's an eight, that's, that's great, Ian, awesome. That means you kind of got your, your avatar down, you know your niche market, right? Amy, three, okay, so there's some work to do, Amy, right? Maybe we need to filter a bit harder on leads coming in. Jennifer, three, okay, so. Okay, so this is good, guys, we got a mix. So some, again, if you're, if you're above a six or a seven, don't need to worry about this, this isn't your problem, okay? Second, what I talked about earlier, guys, not quoting profitably, right? We don't have enough profit above or break even, right? We don't know market first margin. We don't know labor burden. We're not job costing. If all those terms are like jargon to you, you're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? That's number one. Okay, Ryan, I'll upload that file in a second, but that's where I want you guys to start. Because again, everything else on this wheel, again, kind of useless. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your margins. I actually spoke to a gentleman yesterday. He joined our program. Um, so he's doing about $4 million in sales, Ryan. Check this out, okay? Really high end. Do you guys know where Niagara Falls is? Probably everyone does, I hope. I, yep. I know a lot of Americans don't know a lot about Canadian geography, but I hope you all know where Niagara Falls is. It's kind of a famous landmark. So he's near Niagara Falls. 
doing a ton of revenue. Thanks, Amy, $4 million. Okay, I said, great, what was your net profit last year? He goes, oh, we made a loss. I was like, what? $4 million in revenue in residential renovations in Niagara Falls, which like the Niagara region in Canada, there's a lot of money there, like very high end homes. So I was like, how is that possible? Like that doesn't make any sense. And he's like, yeah, I don't really know. And I was like, okay, what's your break even? And he's like, uh, I'm not really sure. So I, I sat with him for a second. I said, okay, pull up your cookbooks. What are all your fixed expenses a month? What's your salary? We added it up, okay? His break even was 27%. Ryan, guess what he was charging above his break even? <laughs> uh, I don't even want to guess. Let's 2%. Hear it. <laughs> there so it he is. was charging at a 29% margin. He didn't know that it cost him 27% to run his business every quote. So he's like, okay, that makes sense why I make no money, right? And he's having massive cash flow issues. It's like, is it a shock that if you don't even know your basic numbers and what your costs are above your, your, your pricing, right? He's doomed, he could never make money doing that. He'd constantly be chasing his tail, right? There's this tiny little bit of profit and then heaven forbid, as you know, right? Jobs get delayed, things go wrong, people make mistakes, right? Guys slip up, things get missed, right? All of a sudden he's losing money. That's why he had a loss. And objectively, you might go, wow, $4 million business, he's got a big office, he's got all these trucks, he's got yep. an fancy website. <laughs> he's, he may, might be doing worse than some of you guys. So don't worry about the revenue, guys. And again, all the flashy stuff, we want to worry about profit and running a lean, right? Really heavily, like Brian says, data-driven business. Okay, so we can be profitable because that's why we're here, guys. I don't think any of you started your own business to make less money than you were making before. If you did, um, you know, maybe we should have a separate chat offline, but I hope most of you guys got into business to make more money and have more time with your family. And if you if you did, then chasing cash flow is going to be ultimately a constant hamster wheel and it's not very fun. So let's start again with the pricing first, okay? Is this all making sense, guys? And again, where do you score yourself one out of 10 here? Do you know your numbers? Are you job costing every job using busy busy? Right, you have it, you have all your data points. Are you kind of maybe, nah, I don't know my break even, I haven't checked it in a while or... Well, I don't really know margin versus markup. So, Ian, okay, so Ian, great place to start, okay? This is gonna be have a big impact for you. Um, not to be the bearer of bad news as well, most of you guys, and we see this, and I'm sure you do too as well, Ryan, chronically undercharging. Most contractors yep. just don't have enough margin on their jobs. And it just means, again, they're not making the profit they need. But again, solvable problem, okay? So keep typing in, guys, where do you score yourself uh, on the actual quoting side? Like, do you know your numbers in and out? You verify every quote? Or is it kind of maybe a guessing game? Ashley's an eight. Awesome, Ashley. Okay, wicked. So again, we got a mix here, guys, which goes to show again why we could have maybe some inconsistencies, okay? Now, the third thing is, might not make sense to everybody, but I'll kind of break it down, guys, which is maybe we're not running our jobs profitably, okay? And this is why a tool like Busy Busy is so critical because if we're having trouble like tracking what the guys are doing, we don't know who's clocking in, who's clocking out, right? We don't know where jobs are at in terms of are budgeted, um, let's say a lot, a lot of hours and labor against against the quote, right? We could again be running into a problem where there's things going on on site. Certain crews are kind of you know slacking, and we're losing money due to like really the efficiency on site. And if you don't have any data to see what's going on, it's going to be hard to figure that out. So the first thing you want to do is figure out like, hey, do we have jobs that are consistently like running over budget, consistently behind, but we're always underestimating the materials because that might be again why you're having the cash flow problem because you're expecting it to take this much and cost this much, but it ends up costing more, okay? Which again, eats into your guys' bank account. So really, really easy area to start as well. Again, maybe you have to spend a little time in the field doing a bit more investigation, doing a bit more quality control, right? Could, could be something you need to pick up on. Um, but again, also getting that your guys have the tracking and we actually have our budgets. And, and Ryan, like this is exactly, I think, why busy busy is so great because again you can see quickly which jobs are profitable and which jobs are not right and like, I, I i assume you run into this as well where we'll we'll talk to contractors where prior to using a, a busy busy they'll uh track profitability based on what's in the bank account right so <laughs> i had more yeah. than i did at the beginning of the month therefore i won um without the understanding like like what you're talking about is well which jobs made money which jobs didn't make money right did three of them make money, one lost money. Um, where it is, it, it, it's, a, it's a cool thing, watching those companies transition into a busy, busy, utilize the budgets and the job costing where they can, they can go in and see, hey, we're halfway through this job and we're on budget versus a shoot, I have no idea. Yeah, doing any kind of uh, bank account type cash flow monitoring doesn't work, guys. Like what the money in your bank account, that's not your cash flow. Right, it's what's happening before and after. That's just you're just getting a like a snapshot. You're just getting a Polaroid with the bank account, 
right? It's a moment in time. It doesn't reflect what's really going on because flat cash flow is cyclical, okay? And yeah, you're, you're, you're big on, right? And like, it's, yeah, we, we, we call it just like guesstimating all the time, right? It doesn't really work, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so again, guys, where do you score yourself here, right? You're, do you know your jobs are like super productive? Every job runs on budget? Cool, you're nine or 10. Is it like, man, I hope some jobs make money, but I know some jobs lose and it averages out. And is it like, ah, I have a couple of great crews, but I have a couple of crews are just like always behind on things, right? Again, you got to ask yourself. And again, guys, don't like, be honest with your score because like me and Ryan don't, we're not affected by it, right? Like if you yeah. lie to us, it doesn't really have any impact on us. You got to be honest with yourself here. Give yourself an honest evaluation because the better you can do that, right? The faster you can you can see where to solve the problem. Okay, don't, don't be worried about being embarrassed about having a low score. It doesn't hurt anybody. No one's going to judge you. We're just here to help you guys. And the more honest you are, again, the faster we can get to the problem, okay? Ian's a six, Amy's a five. Okay, yeah, seeing a theme here. Okay, guys. Now, this couples into um, kind of the, the fourth thing, right? Which is, again, maybe we have some team members who aren't as profitable as productive, right? Maybe they have a bad attitude. Maybe they're lazy. Um, maybe they're just, they're, they're dropping in their performance. Uh, maybe, again, they're, they're being put in the wrong roles. Uh, and if we don't, again, track their hours, track their efficiency, track how they're doing on jobs, we're not going to know. But ultimately, you probably have some great people, some A players, and you might have some people who aren't necessarily the best, and they might be dragging down right, your productivity and thus your profits and cash flow. So the, the really important thing to do here is just kind of have an honest evaluation, um, maybe with your business partner or yourself or like one of your, your best team members and go like, hey, who's really maybe holding us back on site or who's showing up late consistently? Uh, you know, who's, who's, you know, messing up with materials, who's making a mistake, right? These are the kind of things that are going to eat into your profits and then again, affect your cash flow. And, and again, with busy, busy, it's black and white guys, right? You can just see who's always on time, who's on budget, right? And which of the crews again are better. And then it's a, then it's a black and white, very obvious data choice versus like, well, I like this guy, you know, but I don't really know, or, oh, he's so friendly. The customers love him, but, but is he actually making you money? Right? Like we're not we're not here to make friends. We're here to be business and be profitable. And sometimes those employees, right? As as we know, right, they have to go. Because yeah. we can't we can't run a business, guys, if our crews aren't profitable. Okay, because it's gonna keep killing your cash flow. Or maybe they keep coming to you and asking you to, you know, give them advances, pay them early, right? Oh man, like I I, I can't wait till next week for payday. I get it get paid out and make my rent. That's gonna affect your cash flow, right? Like <laughs> and if they're if they can't, you know, wait a week for a thousand dollars, guys. They probably have some personal issues and they're probably not a fit. Okay. That's a red flag to me. I wouldn't keep that person on my team. Very, very simple. Making sense so far, guys? Yeah. Everybody here seems to be under six. So I think everybody's got a little bit of work to do with maybe the team, maybe some performance, the management, maybe a little bit of uh, cracking the whip, so to speak. Okay. Uh, and this again, same kind of thing with number five. Again, if there's no real structure in the field, like there's nobody managing job sites, there's no real leader on site and things are unorganized or the jobs aren't set up, people don't know where to go, you're not tracking it, guys, it's just gonna, again, lead to these consistent cash flow issues. Hey, Rockstar, if this video resonated with you at all and you want a proven plan and pathway to take your contracting business to the next level with me and my team of experts, click the link below and apply for a free 50-minute pathway to Profits Call.